we might have to. Is your phone gonna die too? Cause we know how you do. What the hell just happened? Alright, share that one. We're back, somewhat live. I think um, Facebook, Apple, and H and M have a conspiracy to try to shut down the airgasm show. They don't want to hear the truth tonight, cause we gonna tell them the truth about this uh this campaign ad that's going on. Oh man. Mute that. I think we back. I think we live. They try to shut the kid down. No, no, no. They ain't want me shut us down. They try. Oh, on live, we look backwards. Your thing don't rotate? Did it rotate? Yeah, it we're dealing with a little technical, little technical difficulty. Small thing. But where was we? Alright, so I was saying, like, my humor is a little left. So, you know, when I seen the coolest monkey in the jungle with the black boy at the shirt. What did you think about? I instantly broke out laughter all over the office. They thought I was fucking crazy. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Sorry, Kevin. yo, that shit. But here's what, on a serious note, here's what it told me, right? Because, you know, I think a couple steps ahead. What it told me was H&M doesn't have any people, any black people working within their company. Exactly. Because there's no way in the hell this would have went through, the campaign would have went through X amount of hands and a black person would have saw it and been like, this is a great idea. Shoot it off. No way. After watching what happened to Pepsi, what happened to Dove. Dove. Like, this shouldn't happen. This is irresponsible. It's crazy. But it's funny as fuck. <laughs> but my thing is, okay, everyone that is offended, are you still going to go shopping at H&M? That's what I want to know. Do I... you feel like, like, how many people have went back out and started buying Dove again? Like, it's Did you like start buying Dove again after I told you don't buy Dove? I bought it inadvertently. <laughs> what do you mean you bought it and I told you don't buy no Dove? I said that I bought it inadvertently. When I got home, <laughs> I was City like... City is funny, right? The coolest monkey in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> and he's sitting up there like... <laughs> he a superhero. He a super monkey. <laughs> hey, that poor boy. We don't even know his name. Nothing. <laughs> His parents. Oh man. No, but what I was saying though is what? we don't we don't like we don't know their financial situation. Exactly. We don't know how much money he got for. Cause think about it, right? Modeling is no different than acting. Right. So now if you got a character, say it's such as uh, you got like a, like a Michael K. Williams who played a, a, a gay character, and um. With the guns in the streets in Baltimore, the the, the wire. He played gay Omar. He's not gay in real life. Right. So do you hold, you know what I'm saying? So the same standards apply with modeling? Like, they got a check to be this... The monkey. To, 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 in essence, to be the monkey. Do you really hold that against him? I mean, it's like, a gay. It's, it's the same thing, like, in back in the days when they started putting actually African Americans in movies. They would paint their face black or... Oh, black oh, face, but that black was faces. yeah, black face. No, it was black people actually with their face painted, painted black. Okay. So is I think it's the same terms with that as well. You think so? Yeah. So you can't hold the actor slash model accountable for he could be taking a role. He could well, be held well, not the kid because the, you know the kid is not. It they could be, be the held accountable to a certain degree, just like um. Who's the singer that went to go sing for Donald Trump? And did uh, she, Chrisette Michelle. Did she want to go apologize afterwards? After the backlash. She ain't know the black community was going to have that shit. But she should have known the black community wasn't for that. And, Again. But no. Again. After she got her check, that's when she wanted to apologize. Yeah, well. Exactly. I like, mean, no, it don't work 
like that. I will never buy any of her albums. So you trying to tell me if Donald Trump threw you a quarter million dollars to come sing at the inauguration, you was going to say no? I would sing, but I would say <laughs> Again, we don't know how much they got for the jobs that they had to do. I understand that, but sometimes you got to Shit, a quarter in. million dollars, a lot of people like, look, anime, you going to sing for Donald Trump, and you going to sing good. And then we worry about black Twitter later. <laughs> yeah. Black people are always forgiven anyway. They forgive everybody. Black people's attention span don't last long. This will this last maybe a week, maybe two weeks, and then it's back to H&M. Oh, did you see that H&M released a coupon for 80% off? <laughs> so all you black people, they gonna be like, they can't resist this. Listen, and you know the black community is the biggest consumers of products anyway. Like shopping, when it comes to shopping, that's what the black people do. So you trying to tell me, you gonna let this 80% discount slide? <laughs> they gonna be like, we gotta hit them with this. What? Like, oh, what? Somebody finally clicked in the office. They was like, oh, what are we going to do? We're going to lose sales? 80% off. Boom! Now what you going to do? You ever shopped in H&M? I, I, it's just, I don't like shopping there because I feel like I got to look too hard. It's like everything is thrown all over the place. Like I'm at a flea market or something. So. Like a Marshalls? Yeah, but it's just all over the place. I can't. I, can, I don't have an attention span like I need the outfit to be laid out for me and be like oh I like that one. Oh, you say, so you say you don't have the attention span so even if you planned on protesting it wouldn't last long either well I don't shop there so it doesn't matter for me <laughs> when it first happened I said this is a protest that I could back 100% because you don't shop there I don't shop there yeah. so, <laughs> I never shop this will be an easy protest I'm, I'm for me I'm forever 21 type of person but don't they have like the same type of shit forever 21 yeah, and H&M and and m just be all over the place to me I can't shop there at mm. all mm -mm -mm. so what's up with this president what he do now you guys we, are we're trying to cover Oprah. all the stuff Oprah for president Oprah for president that's something that's been circulating since her since her speech since which her speech, her speech was Golden amazing Club. but I feel like let's not jump the gun now we're gonna go to, to from a great speech to a president like that's the problem with we have all these inexperienced people being president like everybody could be president now on that note how much experience do you really need to be president when the president actually really doesn't call shots? Everybody knows that the president is really just a puppet for the people behind the scenes that's really pulling the strings. So you say Congress, you know, the House, all so these other parties, the no lobbyists. Say so at all. Mm, you not gotta be as, kidding me. Not bro. as much as you I think that you're trying to give them credit for. They have a lot of credit. They have a lot of say so in a lot of things. Forty five is in office. You trying to tell me Oprah can't do a better job than 45? I'm sure on an intellectual level, she's well surpassed him. Yeah, I believe that. But I just would like someone who was actually not an actor, not a, 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 a freaking real estate man. Like, just let someone who is actually into politics try to do this job and do it well. Like, I love Oprah. Mm -hmm. I love her to death. Yeah, I think she's... Uh, great person i like her personality her speech was amazing but let's not jump to being the president did you vote for obama yes the first time yes you know he had like little to no experience. i know i know and i didn't think it was kind of hypocritical the only reason saying. why i voted for him was because he was black <laughs> Let's keep it at a hundred. Let's keep it. You don't need when you're let, a black person. Let him do it. Like listen, when you're a black person, you don't need any other reason to vote for Obama. You don't need. You don't need to know about his politics. You don't need to know if he had a birth certificate or not. He's black. Fuck it. We voting for him. That's simple as that. And you know what? I can't even say that 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 applies to all candidates because Ben Carson was running during this. Um, Trump thing and nobody was voting for him because he was a complete idiot. How are you a brain surgeon and you a complete idiot? Because he only knows the brain. Now, other than the fact that Oprah is, I guess, a celebrity status, is that the only reason why you wouldn't vote for her if she ran? 
I mean, well, if she from a business w- standpoint, if she, if she she's if we're taking the Donald person, Trump approach like, from a business honestly, standpoint, honestly, if she did successful. run, run right. If she did run for president, bring who and, on camera? What is she talking about? Look at it. And um, oh, what are you talking about? The screen, dead. And I had to choose between Oprah and Donald Trump. Hands down, it's Oprah. But Donald Trump already said he's running again. Okay. So why wouldn't you want to vote? Uh, why wouldn't you want? I said if I had to. Listen, over fifty. Wait, let's ask Jesus the people Christ. what they think because you just you're making me hot. That's what I do. I make all the women's hot, baby. Oh, please. I make all the women's them hot because I'm the girls them sugar. Oh, my gosh. So, yo, listen. Over 56 million people voted for Donald Trump. This wasn't a fluke or accident win. There is a strong portion of America who made their statement loud and clear that they were tired of the last eight years and they wanted something totally opposite. Of course. I agree with that. So... I'm saying, based on the numbers of popular votes that he got, you need a candidate. You need a candidate that's very popular that can take some of those votes away. So you think Oprah could take it away? Oh, without a doubt. I know white women that love Oprah. Yeah, everybody loves Oprah. What? Oprah? She ain't gotta know Jack. She just gotta put her name in the thing. She'd be like, you get a house, you get a house, and you get a house. Boom, that's her platform. Everybody voting for Oprah. You wouldn't vote for Oprah? Keep it 100. If, if I had to if, vote between Donald Trump and, and Oprah, Oprah, I would be Oprah. All right, then, so why wouldn't she Just win? Just because this? I don't like Donald Trump. But this that's what I'm saying. Like, this is an easy landslide victory if she, run, if she runs. She don't got, that we know of, she ain't got no scandals. She ain't licked to no politics. Like, this is an easy win. Like, this is, a, a, e- this is the easiest win ever. This ain't like when he was running against Hillary and, you know, Hillary got a tainted pass. And... Rob says Oprah, hell no. But Rob, for sure, she would shift those votes from Donald Trump to yeah. her. That's that's like a no-brainer. You can't even deny that, my G. You know she would um shift those votes. People are voting for her. You want to read her comments or are you just going to stare at the uh, screen? Joyce said, um, not going to lie, I don't feel totally comfortable with a female doctor and I don't feel uh, that that comfortable with a female president. Don't shoot me, just being honest. I hear that. Is that, be- is that because females' emotions cloud judgment? That's why you wouldn't want a female president? I think... Um, you were, would you, would you, do you have an a, a, a issue with her gender? No, I don't. So you think a female would make a good president? If she's equipped way, yes. She said yes. Like Females who? Are, I don't know who. I can't think of nobody right now. What about Michelle Obama? You think she would have made a good president? Yeah, I think she's straightforward and... But I'm... I don't know. What about Hillary? No. <laughs> that didn't take long. Unequivocally, no. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, that's checking out on Facebook Live. You can always call and We would love to hear from you in the new year. The number is 619-924-0711 and press 1 to speak to the host. So, for those of you just tuning in, what's going on is we kind of going through like a... I wouldn't say a year in review, but just a review from the last three weeks that we've been gone. A lot of topics that, you know... We missed while we were gone, such as the, the uh, New Year topics that's going on just just started. The H and M campaign. Oh, did, you, at, did you guys hear about um, the singer Genuine that a transgender person tried to kiss him and he didn't want to uh, like give him a kiss, and now they're calling him homophobic. If that's the kid, label me wherever you want. God damn it! No, <laughs> listen. If if it was a a straight person, you can't just be letting strangers come and kiss you. So if you want to label me, I don't, I don't, you don't give a shit. All the stuff going around, people got herpes and all type of weird shit going on. You don't want to have these strangers just walking up and kissing you? You crazy? On the I, I, you get staph infection like that? You crazy? I never heard of that. What? You walk around, your face just itching. What happened? I let some nigga just kiss me in the face. <laughs> nigga. <laughs> Damn that. You can't 
can't be calling people. First the of people. all, I don't. You know what, genuine? I don't give a fuck what nobody say. The LGBTQRS yeah, community, they, they could kiss your ass. Tell them to kiss mine too, because I'm not letting no random person, straight, gay, transcend. By gender, whatever the fuck. But he's genuine. Up, it don't, don't matter. No, but the thing is, he let other people hug him and kiss him. You don't know that. Yes, I see it all the time. You don't know that. Damn I've that. I've seen it. You, have, you a human, you have the right to be selective. He let me hug him. Oh, well. You got big ass lips. I'd have let you hug me too. <laughs> what my lips got to do with it? I don't know. Thanks for tuning in, Corey. Thanks, Corey. Um, yeah, I'd have, I'd have let you give me a little, little hug and tug. You look like you got hug and tug in you. <laughs> you get a hug and a little extra, mm, a little tug at the end. Oh, come on. Oh, man. now it's come on. Because you you're being ridiculous. Because you put yourself out there. You want to be ridiculous? I'm going to go all the way ridiculous. Ladies and gentlemen, Facebook Live, if you see her on the street and you give her a little hug, she's going to give you a little tug. <laughs> Male or female, you're getting a rub and a tug. A hug and a tug. It depends. It depends. <laughs> if she's sober or not. <laughs> If I'm sober, it's not going to happen. You better give your trans- transgender followers a little hug and tug. They're going to say you're discriminating. It, I'm not discriminating. It depends on how drunk I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, yo, on a personal note, mm-hmm. I decided that from January to February that I'm not going to drink, y'all. And he's lying already. I'm not going to drink, you He's a liar, you guys. He came in Sunday, laid in the bed. I turned over, went to hug him, and I haven't been drinking. And I'm like, <laughs> what is that fabulous smell? <laughs> <laughs> is it steak? No. <laughs> What is that? It's alcohol. So I'm like, you've been drinking? He's like, yeah. I'm like, come here. Let me lick your lips. It <laughs> wasn't really drinking. It was like a drink. So I walked in. We went watching football with my dudes. And they're like, yo. Peer pressure. Friends are the devil. I tell these dudes, yo, I'm not drinking like that. These niggas break out like a whole half a bar and just lay it there. They're like, yo, that rum punch is the truth. Soon as they open the cap you can of smell the rum it. punch, you smelt it. The whole room just filled up with the aroma of rum punch. I'm sitting there later, like <laughs> <laughs> they like, yo, bi, you can't do it. They like, such and such birthday is Sunday. Such and such birthday is Monday. The following weekend is somebody else's birthday. Another birthday after that. So I said, you know what? Just like a fat person on a diet. I might need a little cheat day with my alcohol intake. So I had a little cup of rum punch. Just a little. It was a little cup. It wasn't much. It was enough to be like, damn. Yeah, because, you know, you sometimes, you know, when you're an addict. I'm not saying I'm an addict. But you got to kind of wean them off the drug or the alcohol slowly. Mm-hmm. You can't just go cold turkey. Because that will lead to backlash and um really just pouncing on it and abusing it. So, you know, you got to slowly back it up, take it and in. And a glass of wine is the same calories as a glass of soda. Oh, I don't give a shit about the calories. I'm already fat. That ship has sailed. Oh. So, calories, not the... I just try to get my, my little liver and stuff a little, you know, a little reboot. A little reset. Oh. So... So, he drank. <sighs> It was a little cup. It wasn't it's even, drinking is drinking. You drink alcohol. It wasn't Bugsy drinking. It's, but it's alcohol. So, yeah, that was... Don't worry about that. That's over. It's gone and done. So, my man Ben's birthday is Friday. <laughs> right. What you gonna do? I'll be drinking water, Oh, you man. You see what I got? I got agua. Y'all gonna see me in the club. We are drinking water. With some agua. So if I have the straight bitch face, you know why. Water Uh, made us do it. (laughs) So you might not get a a hug and rub. No hug and tug from me. While we on this water. I don't know why she doing it. I said I'm going to do it. This monkey see, monkey do. He said he was going to do it. So I was like, okay, I'll do it alone. I'm going to get her H&M monkey shirt. Because her monkey ass jumped right on the bandwagon. I'm going to do it too. All right. (laughs) I don't know why you doing it, but come on in. Life sober sucks. Well, not for you. Being married to me is like a fucking dream. Oh, whatever. 
Shout out to my co-host. Whatever. Yo, it's that point in the show. We gotta take some. We take gotta pay, some, some, pay bills. some bills. Take a little commercial break. You guys can call in too. We want to talk to you. Find Number out about your new year. We are the advice couples. If y'all need any advice, no, you screwed anything, that up. What are we? We don't. The uh, relationship experts. See, I should have been drinking. See, we are the relationship she don't know experts. Shit when she so, it. if you guys need to call in and talk about anything, we are here for you. We're gonna take a quick commercial break and get right back to it. Is the Airgasm Show on Gonzo After Dark Radio. I'm your host, Bugsy, kicking it with my lovely co-host. Tonight, And we'll be right back, y'all. Shop Golden Child ENT for the latest Golden Child ENT merchandise, music, and much more. Just log on to www.goldenchildent.com and click on the Shop Golden Child ENT tab for your shopping options. In addition, visit us on eBay at Golden Child ENT for a variety of quality goods and name brand products and tremendous savings. That's www.goldenchildent.com or visit us on eBay. And remember, Golden Child ENT, we shine brighter. For the latest in entertainment, new music, videos, fashion, and worldwide news, log on to www.goldenchildent.com. Updated on a daily basis to get you up to date with the latest. Follow Golden Child ENT on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Google+. Golden Child ENT. We shine brighter. Welcome back to the Tuesday night edition of the Airgasm Show on Gonzo After Dark Radio. I'm your host, Bugsy, kicking it with my lovely co-host. Tonight is... And we are back live in effect for 2018. Tonight is Season 3, Episode 10, and we are talking about New Year Sparks. All the events and uh, topics that took place while we were gone over the last three weeks for the holidays. You know, you had Christmas. Christmas. And then after Christmas, we had New Year's Eve. So, you know, we gave well, you guys... how did you guys party? Did you party? Did you stay home? Any New Year's resolutions? Like, what are you going to change? Or you're not going to change at all. You're just going to still be yourself and just enjoy the New Year. That was a great segue into the next topic, which is New Year's resolutions. Have you guys set any New Year's resolutions? What do no. you feel about res- New Year's resolutions? Do you set one? Do you follow them? What do you... What do you um, if I do you, have you, to, the, I will. But the, what, this what? year... If you have to. Like, if I feel like I need to set a New Year's resolution, like what I want to change in the new year, yes. Did you set one but for this year? But no, I feel like I'm perfectly fine. Oh, God. And I don't need Take a your rib out so you can I suck yourself. I don't need a New Year's resolution. So Jesus I Christ. am just going to maintain being myself and... And pray to God that he keeps me healthy and keeps my family healthy. Like I usually do. I told you, y'all. Married to me. Shit is perfectly okay. Whatever. You ain't got to worry about shit. Whatever. Must be nice. (laughs) She said, I am perfectly fine. I just removed this rib so I could suck myself more. Jesus Christ. You asked, I answered. What what is yours? What are you going to change? What are you going to do? Same thing I've been doing for See? the rest of my life, Pinky. Drinking Party money. and bullshit. When listen. Are you, when are you going to start partying? Stop partying. When the casket drops, my nigga, I'm not, listen, I'm not, stop, this train ain't stopping. Because the moment it stops, that's the moment I'm going to die. And I'm oh, not God. Gonna, for real, because think about it. If I don't stay busy, 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 and I just freaking just be dormant and not doing nothing, I'm going to die. I'm not going to die. I'm going to die. Just can't stay at home. Stay doing at home. Mm. Uh, can you stay at home mm. for one week straight? A Just week straight? Week. Yeah, I do. Monday through Friday. No, the Saturday and Sunday is I've part done of the week. I, <laughs> that's the weekend. It's different. No, but that's a whole week. No, you hear when you say Saturday and Sunday, that's the weekend. That's the end of the week. No, that's the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. It's a different subsection. It's not. The week is Monday through Friday. Saturday and Sunday is a different monster. No, it's you can, not. You know what? Matter of fact, throw Friday in there. So Friday through Sunday. It's different. Monday through Thursday. When you sing the days of the week, Saturday and the, Sunday is in there too. I don't sing the days of the week. I'm grown. The days of the week are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You learned that today in school? Yes. <laughs> the days of the week, ladies and gentlemen. 
So what do you think about people setting New Year's resolutions, though? Do you think it's bullshit feel, or no, do you I think it's like necessary? I feel like whatever you need to do to get you to the place that you need to be in life, do it. If you need to set a New Year's resolution and try to, try to follow through with it, you know, go ahead and do it. Do whatever you need to do to be a better you. Facts. Um, you know, there was something I used to think was a silly idea, but now I think it's a pretty good idea. What's that? Vision boards. Oh, yeah. When you set it, anytime when you write something down in life, because that's one thing that I do. I write it down and, well, actually, I write my prayer down and I thank God for everything. Even though it's not there, I still thank God for it. And it tends to foresee and I get those things that I always ask for. Yeah, I believe that people, I, I, I don't think you should just write it down and like put it in a closed book. I think you need to wake up and see these goals and, and short term and long term goals posted in front of you. So as soon as you wake up, you be like, I gotta conquer that head. goal. Yeah, yeah. You, I gotta conquer that goal. I gotta get this accomplished. I'm gonna I get him a vision that. board. I don't know why I don't got no love for me. What? You heard me. <laughs> you don't know if you want one? <laughs> no, no, I do want one, but I don't... I you don't, don't have know, no vision? I don't know what goals I need to really set. You should say... Losing I'm weight is not an option because I'm not working out. Not doing it. Sorry. You see these guns, though? I don't think I need to work out, though. You look good. Got guns, baby. When you got guns, you see that shit? Guns. Welcome he, to the gun show on Gonzo at the Dark. Look at that forearm, son. He's, the f nigga he's with that shooting forearm. people. Guns. Pow, pow. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that was a six shooter. Y'all didn't even see that. Pow, pow, pow. Just shooting all over the place. These guns. I'm going to stay like you this a one, sniper. Camera. Sniper. Pow, pow. <laughs> And other news that happened over the last three weeks, your girl Cardi B has been killing it. She dropped another new single called um, Bartier Cardi. Did you hear it? No, but I like the song with the singer. I was going to get to that too. And then right after that, because you know she's on Atlantic Records, which is, I, I think, I believe that's where Bruno Mars is also on. They did a collaboration, and in the video, in the video is like a throwback and of color. Eleven Color, the opening scenes of Eleven Color. So that's pretty dope. Cardi B is doing her thing now. That is, if if anything is not inspiration, Cardi B is inspiration. Yeah, cause she was a stripper. Right? She was a stripper that what? went to Instagram and just was talking shit on Instagram. And from Instagram went to Love and Hip Hop, and from Love and Hip Hop, she used that platform to. Launched his rap career and it's just been psh, sky's the limit now. But you know who I feel sorry for? Who? The dude that was her boyfriend in jail all that time. <laughs> Tommy, that was his name, right? Tommy. I didn't follow her on Instagram. No, I love the hip hop. Oh, why do you feel sorry for him? What happened? Because when she was just like, eh, he was supposed to be with her during that time period and. When she took off, she didn't say nothing about Tommy anymore. They broke up, and now she with the rapper Offset from the Migos. Uh, Poor well, Tommy. He is steadfast. And she put it in a she put a line in it too. She said, "No nigga want to be my ex." <laughs> Dang. Shout out to Cardi doing her thing, and already 2018. You think 2018? You think she gonna have longevity, or is just a, a period? I don't know. I really don't know about rappers, so I can't tell you. I, I I can't like I like Snoop Dogg, but I'm not a person that knows about bars and all this type of well, stuff. Well, over the time we was pat, I mean that we were gone during the Christmas time, Snoop Dogg dropped a new song with Boys to Men. It was a Christmas song, and they performed it live on the Apollo for the first time. And oh, I liked it. It was pretty groovy. Yeah. Had a nice little. I love Snoop Dogg. He's so smooth. He can get a hug and tug. Mm-hmm. Sober. Four tugs. <laughs> It's probably long, too, because he's skinny. Biatch. Why are you hating? I ain't hating much. I'm just talking to my Snoop Diz Double Dizzle voice, Biatch. Snoop Double Dizzle. And he be like this. Mm, mm, mm. No, he don't. Yes, he does. Not like that. Yes, he does. You did nothing like Snoop Dogg. I did Snoop. No, that's, that's Tinnita. That's Snoop. <laughs> Let me see you do Snoop. No, I'm not doing Snoop. Is it going to give me a hug and tug? Yes. One, two, 
three or two, though, four. Oh, Look, oh shit, you see how her face light up? I'm about to get down. I'll get done. Snoop Doggy Dog, Dr. Dog, Dre. Dog, Dog, Dog. What else happened over the time we was gone? Oh, for the hip hop heads. This is what I want to know for the hip hop heads that's watching, right? All right, so Skills has been doing the year end wrap up since. 1995 or 2005? 19, I think it's 95 he's been doing it. 2005? Anyway, he's been doing it a long time. It was his thing. What he would do is take the year in review and put it into a song. And then at the end of the year, he would drop it and wrap it up. Somewhere around 2000 something, Uncle Murder, who's now Lenny Grand, started doing it. Now, his version of it was a little more comical, a little more witty. And I guess people started to gravitate towards his more. Now, the one that he put out this year for 2017, in the beginning of the song, he started to diss skills in it, saying that nobody's listening to your shit no more, nigga. Your shit is washed up. You trash, blah, blah, blah. What I want to know from the people is, do you think that's foul? Because, I mean, he's not taking credit for creating it. He did admit that, you know, skills, thing, but in the beginning of this year's wrap-up, he yeah. dissed him. Oh. Well, he's feeling himself. That's you, what happened. You think that's foul that he did it, or it's just part of hip hop? They just gotta. No, they I just don't think take he should have dissed him. Yeah. I, I feel like, you know, why can't. The rap scene is so big. Why do we have to talk, tear people down in order to build ourselves up? Well, because rap is a competitive sport, and I guess to be that number one rapper, you gotta get to the top. You gotta take the, the, the guy down to get the crown. Yeah, the guy that helped you go get up, you got to take him down. It's part of this. But, hey, you see it in corporate America. You watch all of these, um, uh, like, Game of Thrones type shows with the with the Roman Empire. Right. You, you want to be the king, you got to take the king out. You know, that's just how it goes. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. You gotta, that's horrible. It's life. As you see it in Animal Kingdom, you want to be the leader of the pack, you got to take out the weak old leader. It's just how it is. It's how it Survival is. of the fittest. Fittest. Facts. <laughs> to be the, so if you want her spot, ladies, gotta take her out. You nobody, see her on the street? Nobody wants punch my in the face. spot. Nobody wants my spot. You heard her say, it's, uh, it's perfect. I don't need nothing in life. <laughs> ladies, you want her spot? It's only because Bam! I'm a content, a content person. It's not because of him. Ooh. Because he Ooh. is really hard to live with, ladies. He's very stubborn. He doesn't clean up after himself. The only thing he cleans is his car and his butt. That's it. My balls, too. My balls. And he nervous. overpowders his balls. My balls are clean. they fresh. Baby fresh. <laughs> Did you see him deny anything? No. What am I to deny? I, listen, I'm not a person that fucks up the whole house. I fuck up my areas. My areas is by my bed and by my clothes. He hang his clothes everywhere. That's it. It's not the entire house. It's two places. Leave my shit alone. It's not bothering nobody. It's in little piles. It's, a little, it's in little piles everywhere. It's in little piles. <laughs> all but it's, it's not everywhere. It's in two places. It's in like by the four bed. places. The bike. That's by my armoire. The radiator. That's by my armoire. The other radiator. That's by my bed. I said, I said two places. Nigga. I said it's like pals, like four plows everywhere. No, you just looking at it. It's really just one connecting pal <laughs> <laughs> that runs along. Talk about that's by my bed. That's the side by my of the armoire. Wall. Right. That's by my shoes. Just leave my shit alone. It's all over the place. Oh so, man, what happened? What else happened during the time we was going, son? Uh, you got slapped up and titties in your face. Titties in my face. And henny in your mouth. Henny in my mouth. But we gotta take a call to keep this thing moving. Oh. For those um that don't know how this goes, those if you don't know by now, I don't know what to tell you. If but you don't know. We answer phone calls. You gonna just keep talking over me, man? Ladies, you see on the street punching the face. Yeah. Um. We answer phone calls by the last four digits of the number that you're calling in. So, we're going to take a call to keep this thing moving. Call a 9735. You're on live with the Airgasm Show. What's your name? Where you calling from? Big Rail in the building. Big oh. Rail is in the building. What's cracking?
Hey, my G. Whoa. What's good, homie? All right, so what? Happy you, New Year. Happy y'all. New Year, happy my new ninja. Year. Thanks for calling in. We appreciate that. What do you want to talk no about? Doubt, no doubt. What, what topic you want to talk about? You can talk about that Lenny Grant situation, Uncle Murder, man. All right, so let me let me ask just you. Just so happened to hear his "Don't Come Outside" album. What do you think of it? Pretty good or trash? I think it's pretty good. I think he stepped his game all the way up. Okay. Now see, let's the let's. The thing he got going on, he he on some like how fifty was when he first came out. How he started talking about everybody. That's the approach that he takes. You think but that I think hip-hop needs that. You think that formula still could work in 2018? Because I think, think about it. definitely could still work. We're not in the age of lyrical rappers no more. We're in the age of mumble raps and a lot of melodies and stuff. So I don't know if that approach is still going to work. I like it because, you know, like you said, hip-hop is a competitive sport. Right. And we definitely need some more competitive people. Like on his Don't Come Outside album, uh-huh. that's by Lenny Grant, Uncle Murder. He talking about Jay-Z, talking about Young Thug, how he brought his girl a purse, a Chanel purse, same one that Young Thug got. <laughs> but I think, you know, all of that's pretty funny, man. Uh, you know I mean? We need more of that competitive battle sport. Do they call Young Thug gay? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But, yo, what do you think about the fact that, 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 that Mad Skills started doing the wrap-up? He's doing it for a while. Then Uncle Murder started doing it. Now he released his rap up and he dissed him. You think that's fair in, in the art of hip hop, or you think it's foul? I think it's definitely manipulation because it's more like what Fifty do, like how Fifty has said, "Oh, y'all listen to Ja Rule and all he do is sing and harmonize." The next thing you know, he come out with a song <laughs> singing and harmonizing, and people <laughs> buying it. He going double platinum plus. I think it's what, uh, what Jay said. You made it a high line, I made it a high song. Right. You know what I mean? So that's something that like Uncle Murder done took the approach. Like, okay, he done started it, but I'm making it high. I'm going to talk about people. I'm going to make it funny, make it comical. I think it definitely could work. I like it. Now, whose whose versions do you like better? Do you like Mad Skills versions or you like Uncle Murder's? He um, already said he like Uncle Murder. No, well. I like, I like Uncle Murder's version because... He talking about everybody. He don't care. He even talking about Jay, and I believe he was once signed to the rap. Know yeah. what I mean? He talking about how Davey basically he been manipulating people, the women that he got that's on his label, and all kind of stuff. So he really ain't got no hush. Like you know, he just a real street dude. <laughs> Shout out to Lemon who said Mad Skills is whack. Mad Skills, who said? Like did that's you see what he did in thing. Money and Violence? How he shot his own brother and stuff? That's crazy. You know that dude is just out there. You know that's acting, though, right? Huh? <laughs> you know that's yeah, acting. That. It's not real life. Yeah, like yeah. for you to just take it and just not put that life. on him what? like he did that in real life. <laughs> you say yeah, you, you say you saw how he <laughs> shot him in Money and Violence. <laughs> that was crazy. You know he just playing a role, right? <laughs> it was the script. <laughs> it's definitely a role, but he do got street cap credibility out there. Yeah, he do. <laughs> <laughs> But this is hip hop though. We talking about bars. You think he got more bars than Mad Skills? I think now he do. I think he came a long way. You know, somebody usually trash, but they keep doing what they do, and eventually they're gonna get better or they're gonna get worse. I think he got better. I, I think I, he got more metaphors now. I do believe he got better day. lyrically over the over the course of time. Because when he first came out, I really wasn't really feeling him like that, and then over. Mm-hmm. A, a, a short period of time and and, and as he okay. came out more and more I was like you know what this Uncle Murder guy is not that bad yeah you gotta learn to like him yeah it took a while for me to like him you know what I mean but now I think he got bars now so what do you think about Oprah you think? actually um, being a presidential candidate would you vote for her Oprah yeah, Oprah. Oprah. Would you vote for me Oprah? personally, I went. I went and vote. Me personally, I went and vote for Oprah. Why? I mean, I listen. I heard what y'all saying. Oprah over Donald Trump. I just, me personally, don't believe that a woman is ready to run this country, the most powerful country in the world. I think it'd be chaos. So even though Michelle so Obama chaos. might have wait, been wait, wait, the wait, best candidate, so it's not chaos with Donald Trump running it, and he's a male. Yeah. 
So why it why is it chaos. any different because she's a female that is going to be chaos? Yeah, you got to explain that, my brother. I think, I think with the women, it's just, it's just too much. Like, what Oprah knows about going to war. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of this stuff is very important when it comes to a what president. The president got to make decisions <laughs> when it comes to, like, going to war. And stuff. So what would she know about going to war? What would she know about all this chaos that's going on in America as far as in police on black people crimes and all She's kinds black. of things? She probably could do well. But what did Donald huh? Trump know? She's about? black. Like, she lives in the country. Know, she but, sees what's going on the same way that Donald Dummy sees what's going on. So, I mean, what difference would it really make? Donald Duck is in the right now. What does he know about going to war? I don't think America ready. Are you a sexist? I don't think America ready to have woman head of state. America wasn't ready for a black president. We had one, and it went rather well, if I do say so myself. Yeah, um, Sharon yeah. is saying, thank you, explain. He's pausing too much, and that's why you have people behind you. She would reach a lot of people, and that's what Billy was saying earlier, that she can reach a lot of people, right. not her just popularity black people, alone, but also white people So if she well. had the right team behind her and with her reach and, and mass appeal, I think big things could be done. Because she she yeah, has... That's a situation with Hillary. How many... No, Hillary, no, 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 it's no not even way. comparable. It's not even comparable. People, when it was between Hillary and Trump, it was like, do I want to pick cancer or do I want to pick AIDS? And America pick AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what it boiled down so, to. Literally, yes. Because our choices wasn't really like no choices. It was just like, this is what we had. Like, uh, whatever. So, I mean, that's what it boils down to. But I think if you took Hillary out the equation and put Oprah in the equation and you had Oprah running against Donald Trump because Donald Trump already said he's running again, I think Oprah could pull a landslide victory because even some of those people who voted for Trump will then jump ship and vote for Oprah, especially after seeing how he's in office. Because a lot of them now don't even want to admit that they voted for this dude, but they got to stick to their guns because they voted for him. They don't right. want to look crazy and say, yeah, I made a mistake. When they did He's a demon. That's true. So it is what it is. But That's I don't know. True. I don't know, homie. You, you might have to change your little views on yeah. women running the country. Because think about it. Presidents really aren't calling the shots. They have still got to deal it's with Congress. People around them. Right. You still got to deal with Congress. You got to deal with the House. But they do you have gotta some try to, say so. Yeah, they do have some say so. But you still got to satisfy the lobbyists that slide in you some ones to get certain bills passed. So it's not like they're going up there. Because think about it. I'm sure Obama had tons of things that he wanted to implement and get through that he couldn't and do. And they didn't pass. That he didn't pass. So right. it's really not that guy. It's that guy and all the surrounding factors. It's his crew. Right. Now, you yeah, see Donald Trump's crew is slowly falling apart. People are quitting. People are getting fired. People are stepping down. Like, it's crazy. i never seen nothing like this in my 40 years. 40 years. Well, if I had to re-answer that, now you got you got to re definitely be over over Trump. Oh! Oh, <laughs> you ain't sticking to your I'm guns, Trump, though. yo. You let her brainwash <laughs> you, yo. You let her make you change uh, your answer. That's what I'm saying, no. over Trump. But if it was another candidate, it'd be different. You know what I'm saying? But by the fact that it's still Donald Trump and he's going for a second term. You don't, nobody don't want to see him do another term because he might bring America down to hell. But at the same time, if it was a different candidate that she was running against, then that'd probably be a different story. Who could we make? It's just the fact that it's Donald Trump. For him to make it even. And we definitely don't need him in office for a second term. Oh, yeah. He already made it clear that he's going to exactly. run again. So that's why I feel like a candidate of a Oprah's caliber would make it like such like because with Hillary it was like you was on the fence you really didn't want to vote for her no. some people just didn't vote because they didn't feel comfortable voting for either candidate but if you put a person of Oprah's caliber in that position I think the overwhelming mass majority would the power of it would shift because think about it it wasn't like he just won hey Chanel how you doing it, he had 56 million votes 
That's not a little bit. That's, That's a lot yeah. of people in this country voted for him. And I think the fact that Hillary was on that other side. That's the reason why he has. He landed some of those votes. Yeah. But my thing is, everybody's talking about Oprah for president. Does she even want to be president? I don't think she no, made any No, she's like, she gave but a, they, a great Yeah, they speech. gave the great speech, and they was like, you know what? Oprah would make a Oprah, great president. Oprah, president. <laughs> Oprah, like anybody. Anybody, anybody somebody, please. Oprah for president. <laughs> Do you think Oprah would make a good president? I think she's a caring person. I think that she's a fair person. But I feel like being in that seat is not just about who you are. It's about everything around you. It's about decisions that have to be made, decisions that has to be voted in. So it's not just about Oprah herself and who she is. And I think that because she has to make certain decisions and a lot of things that she can't handle and make it herself, people are going to change how they feel about her. They're going to be like, oh, she did this, she did that. But certain things is not all her decision, the same thing that... It, it doesn't matter, was, because even if it is her decision and not her decision, her name is in the front, exactly, and she's going to take the blame exactly, for it no matter what. Exactly, that's what, what I'm so saying. It that's what I'm right, saying. A lot of matter. people would change because they'll be like, oh, she didn't do anything. Right. She came in here and she didn't do... But so it's from not, a you personal can't standpoint, would it even like be that? worth it for her to run? I wouldn't run. I wouldn't run either, because she built up this big conglomerate billionaire to... It, it 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 could only it could only hurt her legacy exactly to run for president. No, even though Lemon James believes she's the right choice. Ah, uh, I don't. I, for her, from a personal standpoint, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't do, do it. it. There's more to lose for her than it is to gain from being president. Yeah, like everyone loves being the now. first woman black president would be a tremendous tremendous goal. But all the yo. Did you see how great Obama's hair is in the last eight years? He went from a full head of black hair to his whole joint is white. Like it's stressful. It's a stressful job. Like I don't know if I want yeah. that. I don't. I, if I'm Oprah and I'm watching it over the eight years, and you know she's close to Obama, I know she's got first hand of of what it's like to be in that position. I'm sure she don't want no part of that. Um, DJ Chris said this country is not ready for a woman president. Wow, another I don't think we was ready way. for a black president either. Do you think this country was ready for a black not president? Not at all. Cause no. he, and, and the fact that he came from nowhere. Exactly. Nobody know who, who, who Obama was before 2008. He just came on the scene. Okay. He was cr um, charismatic. He was like, hey, this guy could actually be something. And he won. So, I mean, I don't know. The country will not let it happen. Well, you know what, DJ? The, honestly, when Obama came in to office, I said the same thing. I'm like, they're not going to let him. I'm like, I was so shocked that a black man actually won. Forget the fact that he's a black man. His name is Obama Hussein. <laughs> Obama yes. Hussein. I, I Barack would, Hussein Obama. He, if I had, full Muslim name. They let him win. I would have never thought that he would have won. Wow. Okay. Yes. There's a time. There's a time for everything. Okay. Everything okay. can't remain the same, yo. Shift has to come. And listen, listen to what I'm saying, Rel. The bar for presidency now is so me, low. We want you to drop knowledge on us. Call it's so in. low that you 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 almost guaranteed to do well. <laughs> Because the bar is so low. Wow. You really don't got to do much. You could be president. I could be president. They'd be like, he did a great job. Because right now, the state that the country is in, anybody could fill that seat. And they'd be like, you know what? You did a great job. I'm voting for you. Do you, do you really think anybody, though? Anybody. Do you think somebody like Kanye West, remember Kanye West, said you were one for president? I don't Is really see no, I, I don't see no difference between Kanye West and Donald Trump. Yeah, Kanye West and Donald Trump is like. Let me right. tell you this: America really dropped the ball with letting Donald Trump win this presidency. They made this country the laughing stock of the world. Like the 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 power of the presidency now holds about as much weight as being the mayor of Flatbush, and there's no such thing. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy. What did DJ Chris say? I hear that, but a woman and Bill's wife, what? They was like, hell no. 90 seconds. About to go. I don't know I don't what know. DJ Chris talking about. But yo, Rel, we appreciate you calling Limit. in, my G. We about to you sign up. You waited too late to call in. No doubt, Now you got to right, so tune in Thursday. All right, thanks for calling Happy in, my G. Thursday, Happy Limit. New Year. Later. Call in. 
Later. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's our show for tonight. We just wanted to wrap up some of the topics and issues that we missed over the last three weeks while, you know, the holiday season was going through. 60 seconds. So, this is this was season three, episode 10. We call it New Year's Sparks. Tune in Thursday. We'll have a hot topic for we'll you. Be here at 9 p.m. Back in effect. Make sure you tune in. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any topics that you want to discuss, you know, just hit us on the inbox. Hit us on social media. Text us. We'll get to those topics, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning Catch in. us Thursday. It's um, the Airgasm Show on Gonzo After Dark Radio. I'm your host, Bugsy. Kicking it with my lovely co-host. Tonight. And we are out of here, y'all. We're out of here. I'll be back. Yo, son, real talk. Don't call my right phone thing. on Tuesdays or Thursdays at 9 o'clock. Don't call. That's my Gonzo After, After Dark Airgasm podcast, podcast time. Back. Tune in at 9 p.m. It's Gonzo After Dark. Everybody got the brown ear. Gas about to start. Real talk. Got a lot of sex. Yeah. Not what you expecting. It's a matter of perspective. Check, check, check them out. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Yo, bug, they don't hear me, son. I tell they ass again. Nine o'clock on the dot. Where they break it down the topic. Then they break it down and chop it up and walk you through the logic. Every girl that I know. No. Say she love the show. Cause they never had so many eggasms in a row. Yo, good on both posts. Shout out to both hosts. Tonight is a live wire. And Bugsy got jokes. That's a fact, though. Fact, though. He said I got the time, but where's that? I said it got the weapon dark podcast show. She gave us a cold, cold shoulder, told her listen to the show. And, and don't you call me till it's over. Yo, it's got the weapon dark, it got them about to start. Hey, got the weapon dark, it got them about to start. What did you expect? Politically incorrect. Got the nighter on set with the hookah on deck. Yo, it got the weapon dark, it got them about to start. Got the weapon dark, it got them about to start. What did you expect? Politically incorrect. Got both of you on set. Tell the people, cut the check. Yo, the check, yo. Shout out to Cash Kato for our theme song. Shit is fire. I see you all. Thanks for tuning in. Tune in Thursday. 9 p.m. 